Heat coming around turn three. Brittany Sparrow's holding on. Oh. oh, who's pushing the inside? It's going to be Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon with the win. All right, joined here with Chris. So, Chris, what does this year look like in comparison to past years? Uh, we're doing really well. We're really excited about the year and everybody coming back out and being a part of the whole show. And it's exciting to see everybody out here just having a great time and making memories. All right, so last year, obviously COVID, you know, how did that impact you guys? Well, we didn't have the family fairgrounds. We didn't have the carnival. We didn't have some of the education areas. We still had the livestock show and we still had the rodeo and we were still able to uh, give about $9.8 million in scholarships to the youth of Texas. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, we see the venues, we saw the pig racing, but this is all about community. What does this mean for San Antonio? It is. You know, we want to be San Antonio's fair and festival. We want to be their rodeo, and we really are their rodeo. You know, we've been here for 73 years now, which is great. And we do it all for a cause, and the cause is educating the youth of Texas. All right, still a lot left here at Stock Show Rodeo. What can people expect? Well, there's so much going on. We still have so much happening. We have education areas. We have so much food. Everybody loves the food. Carnival rides still happen. This will be throughout the whole run of till February 27th. We have a family day the last day with uh, some of the Latin flair. We're going to have a bullfighters only contest that's free with your grounds admission. So you can go watch that. And we still have uh, 20 or actually, excuse me, about 15 great rodeos still to perform. All right, Chris, thank you so much. Guys, if you have any questions, we have all the answers. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up this half hour, Russia moving ahead with its military buildup near Ukraine. How President Biden still holding the door open for diplomacy, appealing directly to the Russian people. This morning, new video showing the latest group of American soldiers heading to Europe to reassure NATO allies amid the threat of a Russian attack against Ukraine. But Russian officials today saying they are tired of U.S. threats and insisting the Kremlin has no intentions of invading Ukraine. The Russian military releasing more videos of what it says shows some of its troops near Ukraine's border pulling back to their bases. But despite Russia's claims, Secretary of State Antony Blinken says U.S. intelligence shows no evidence of that. On the contrary, we continue to see forces, especially forces that would be in the vanguard of any uh, renewed aggression against Ukraine, continuing uh, to, uh, to be at the border, uh, to mass at the border. Sources tell ABC News Russian President Vladimir Putin has told his military forces to be ready to begin an assault by today, though it's unclear if he's decided to attack. The U.S. believes an invasion would likely begin with electronic warfare and aerial bombardment of Ukraine's critical infrastructure and then a bloody and brutal attack on the capital that Russia would hope to end within 24 to 72 hours. President Biden still holding the door open for diplomacy, appealing directly to the Russian people. To the citizens of Russia, you are not our enemy. And I do not believe you want a bloody, destructive war against Ukraine a country and a people with whom you share such deep ties. Analysts point out that an invasion of Ukraine would lead to high casualties for Russia too. The task in front of the Russians, if they decide to invade, is going to be terribly bloody and terribly costly. And amid the Russian threat, Ukraine officials have remained defiant, instead celebrating a National Day of Unity today. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Live look outside with live cam. You know, it's Wednesday, but it's kind of looking like a Monday. It feels a little bit that way. Yeah. And why is it so windy? Well, we got good southerly winds out ahead of this next storm system, and that that wind that you're speaking of brought in a lot of moisture overnight. So we've got a lot of humidity, some gusty winds, and those gusty winds, by the way, stay with us all the way through Friday. So it's going to be a breezy stretch here. The aquifer is down three tenths of a foot to 665.5. In your pollen count, everything's low again today. Molds are low, mountain cedar also low. We'll talk about that storm system, what it means for our rain chances, and we also have a, a red flag warning in effect tomorrow. I'll explain what that means coming up. This Rodeo Remembers, brought to you by the new 2022 Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. The word rodeo is Spanish for roundup, and there's a good reason for that. The sport we know today would not exist without the horses and cattle brought by the Spanish conquistadors. It all began in 1519 when the first 16 horses were brought to Mexico by the Spanish conquistador, Fernando Cortez. But he forgot something. His men desired the riches of the new world, but they soon missed their beef. After conquering the Aztecs in 1521, beef became a top priority for the Spanish. And that same year, an importer named Gregorio de Villalobos brought the first cattle to Mexico. 
In the years that followed, Cortez became governor of New Spain, and with that, more Spanish began arriving with more cattle and more horses. Eventually, Cortez established a major stock breeding program not far from what is now Mexico City. Over time, the Western style of ranching brought by the Spanish began to evolve. The mixing of cultures and Mexico's unique landscape led to a new way of life and a new type of horseman. We'll talk about the vaqueros of Mexico in the next Rodeo Remembers. A local preschool focusing on learning outside of the classroom from growing food in the garden to taking care of farm animals. Sarah Costa visited with the Lily Pad Farm School to learn about the preschool's mission and talk to the students. From goats, baby bulls, and chickens to a garden that cultivates food by the season, the Lily Pad Farm School emphasizes learning outside with nature. The school's owner, Lily Arguello, says there are about 250 students from infant to six years old who don't just learn inside the classroom, but spend a lot of their time either learning to plant seeds in the garden or feeding farm animals. Nature is part of our world, right? I mean, without that, none of us would be here. So it's really important for kids to kind of get down to the basics and learn how to grow food, learn how to care for animals, and be self-sustainable. Here on the farm, they have about 12 large animals and about 25 small ones, including Magnolia here, who's three months old. The farm animals have such a vital component in the success of the crops, and there's so much learning experience that goes into the farm animals themselves. Six-year-old Camden says he loves feeding the animals, especially when the pig Wilbert visits the farm. Wilbert. Wil oh, the pig? Uh-huh. What noise does Wilbert make? <laughs> Today's garden activity included tilling the soil and planting for the spring. Three-year-old Vivian says she likes watching the plants grow big. What do you do use the soil for? To grow. To grow what? Tomatoes. But it's the animals for six-year-old Eliana and the main reason she loves her school. We get to learn and see the animals. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Nothing like a four-year-old snorting like a pig. How cute was that? <laughs> we'll Have work. you ever held a little baby goat like mm -hmm. that? Oh, yeah. They're the sweetest and the most fun things in the world. There was a lot they of hop. cuteness going on there. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome, too. The kids are getting outside, learning that sort of thing. It, you saw in the, the story there was a little breezy, having to deal with a little bit of wind today. Some cloud cover, too. As we look at the satellite picture, uh, we can see the clouds that have built in. They did this morning. We saw a little bit of drizzle, too. These clouds are starting to break up. We've still got a couple more hours here before we see any significant sun, but it is on the way. And we can see sort of the, the edge here. These clouds really thinning out some in that uh, clearing line, working its way slowly towards Bear County. Still quite a bit of cloud cover up in the hill country. Places like New Braunfels and Gonzales still seeing a lot of clouds. But Carrizo Springs, Catula, all in the sun at this point, and you can see the difference that sun makes. 79 right now in Catula, 70 in Gonzales, 71 in New Braunfels. And the forecast for today, well, it's, uh, there we go, showing that uh, we'll get into the upper 70s this afternoon. 78 here in San Antonio. I do think we'll see some 80s down to the south and west, already getting close as we showed you there in Catula. It's going to be a warm afternoon uh, with that humidity and with the wind as well. As we go outside for you, Starting to see a little bit of sun there in that picture and temperatures now at 67 southerly winds at 14 miles per hour gusting to 24 and that dew point all the way up to 58. So we've gained a lot of humidity just within the last 24 hours or so and that's thanks to these gusty southerly winds gusting now to 24 miles per hour here in San Antonio. We've seen some gusts close to 40 closer to the coast in places like Victoria and Beeville and these winds will not let up much today and it will continue to drive these dew points up into the 50s and even 60s. I'd like to tell you that sets the stage for some good rain tonight. It really doesn't. There is a chance for a couple of showers, but I don't think we're going to see heavy rain here. And as quickly as those dew points came up today, we're going to see them fall tomorrow and it will be very dry once again. And that actually allows for a fire danger to kick in. And we'll explain more about that here in just a second. Here's the water vapor imagery and I'll show you this because we can see our system here over parts of California and Arizona. This is going to be moving towards the plains later today. As it does, it will kick up some severe weather, I think, across parts of North Texas, Oklahoma, on a scale of one to five, about a two. So there's a risk for some stronger storms there. It all stays to our north, though. We miss out on the bulk of the energy here 
And so for us, uh, it will just be warm and humid this afternoon. And then tonight, I'd say between 2 a.m. and maybe 6 a.m., there's a chance for a few showers, only 20%. And it's not going to add up to much, as I mentioned. Once that the boundary comes through, we'll get that really dry air, those gusty westerly winds. That combined with some heat tomorrow is going to put us into a high fire danger. And so most of the areas underneath a red flag warning. Then a cold front comes through and we'll get cooler and breezy conditions late Thursday and into Friday. So here's how it looks on the seven day forecast. We'll go 78 degrees today, 78 tomorrow, just that small chance of rain overnight. And then 60 on Friday after starting off at 34, 33 Saturday morning up to 65. The weekend looks good, but we will add in some extra cloud cover on Sunday. And by next week, it gets warm and humid again, and we may see a few showers, uh, even a thunderstorm or two, it looks like, on Monday, guys. Thanks, Justin. Still coming up, the Spurs looking to go into the All-Star break with a winning record so far on the Rodeo Road Trip. We'll tell you how they can get that done coming up. The Spurs are in Oklahoma City. Tonight they will be taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder and it will be their last game before the All-Star break. The Spurs are currently ranked 12th in the Western Conference standings while the Thunder are in the 14th spot. That's second to last in the West. This will be the fifth game on the Rodeo Road Trip so far. And so far they are a respectable 2-2. Two and two. They have wins over the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta, the Pelicans in New Orleans, bookend by losses in Cleveland and in Chicago against the Bulls 120-109. In that game, remember, former Spur DeMar DeRozan went off. 40 points, 19 of those coming in the fourth quarter. His seventh game is scoring at least 30 or more points. No other members of the Bulls has been able to do that since Michael Jordan back in the 96-97 season. DeMar had a great night. He was super. Uh, but we could have done a better job on him, and we, we didn't. No matter who we put on him, uh, whatever scheme we were trying to use, we did not execute it as as we would like. Uh, and so the combination of him being super and us not executing very well uh, was a big contributor to losing a game. He's playing at such a high level. Um, we tried about every defense on him tonight, and he still was able to you know, get his 40 or whatever it was. So I have a lot of respect for him. I always have. Um, you know, he's, he's unguardable at times. So um, they're playing really well. Um, we gave ourselves a chance tonight, but he was just a little too much for us. All right, enough about DeMar. How about DeJounte headed to Cleveland for the All-Star game this weekend? Before he heads there, he's got to finish off the Oklahoma City Thunder. Hopefully tonight the Spurs can pull off a win at 7 o'clock and end up with a 3-2 and two record going into All-Star weekend. Okay. Scientists say they created a robotic fish. It swims. It just like it should, how the curious creation could help researchers treat some medical conditions in humans. And a dash of salt could make almost any dish taste better, but too much sodium is not good for you. So if you find yourself reaching for the salt more than you should, it might be time to shake it. Your salt habit, that is, coming up today at 5, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris with replacement options that could cut your sodium intake without risking flavor, and it could savor your food as well. Prosecution witnesses retaking the stand in the federal hate crimes trial of the three white men convicted of murdering Ahmaud Arbery. Jurors inside a federal courthouse in coastal Brunswick will be hearing more witness testimony. This is the second trial related to the young man's death. It started last week with prosecutors saying they intend to prove that Arbery was chased and shot in February of 2020 because of his skin color. However, defense attorneys say father and son Greg and Travis McMichael and their neighbor, William Roddy Ryan, made wrong assumptions about Arbery. However, they were not motivated by his race. The family of cinema photographer killed on the set of that movie Rust in October has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against actor Alec Baldwin and the others involved in that production. The lawsuit alleges that the team cut corners, which led to the accidental shooting of Helena Hutchins. When Baldwin fired a gun, he did not think was loaded with live rounds. A lawyer for Alec Baldwin and other defendants says the production used a protocol that has worked on thousands of films. An attorney for Hutchins' family alleged those procedures were not followed. 
Now to the historic settlement in the 2012 massacre of the Sandy Hook Elementary School. Remington Arms, the maker of that AR-15 style rifle that was used in the shooting, agreeing to a $73 million settlement with nine families. ABC's Rena Roy has more. For the first time in U.S. history, a gun manufacturer paying millions in connection with the mass shooting. Remington Arms reaching a $73 million settlement with the families of nine victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. Today is a day of accountability for an industry that has thus far enjoyed operating with immunity and impunity. The families filed a wrongful death lawsuit over seven years ago against the company, which makes the Bushmaster semi-automatic rifle, the gun used by 20-year-old Adam Lanza back in 2012, when he forced his way into the Connecticut school, fatally shooting 20 first graders and six staff members in just 264 seconds. The lawsuit accusing the company of unethically advertising a weapon meant for war to young men, including product placement in video games and ads like this one reading, consider your man card reissued. Eight long years, we've continued our fight to hold Remington accountable for its role in prioritizing profit above safety and using reckless marketing techniques to appeal to at-risk and violence-prone young men. Remington had previously denied responsibility and has not released a new statement since the settlement. The company filed for bankruptcy protection in 2020, insurance companies paying out the settlement. While this is a step in the right direction, more than nine years later, these families say nothing will take the pain away. True justice would be our 15-year-old healthy, and standing next to us right now. But Benny will never be 15. This settlement also allows the families to release internal Remington documents, which they say show they marketed their guns to young men. Experts say this could set a precedent for others who are looking to take legal action against gun manufacturers. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The number of COVID-19 positive patients in U.S. hospitals is declining with the same momentum that it surged in early winter. The U.S. daily case rate has dropped to 161,000. According to federal data, that's down by 80 percent since last month's peak. However, health experts continue to caution that the U.S. is not out of the woods yet. Case levels remain much higher than the nation's previous surges, which the U.S. reporting millions of new cases every week. Meanwhile, the battle over mask mandates continue. Three San Francisco school board members are out after a recall vote fueled by frustration over COVID closed schools and potentially misplaced priorities. In the end, the vote wasn't close, with about 79% voting to oust those school board members. Babies whose mothers were vaccinated against the coronavirus have a reduced risk of being hospitalized with the disease. That's according to a brand new study that was published on Tuesday by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The study found infants are protected for the first six months of their lives. Researchers say pregnant women who got the jab later on in their pregnancies have a 80% chance of protecting their babies. That chance reduces down to 32% if they got it early on. The study monitored 379 children who were hospitalized with COVID and other sicknesses at pediatric hospitals between July and mid-January of this year. Outside with live cam, I guess you would call it meteorologically speaking rain around town this morning, but I didn't really do a whole lot. Did I think it? it's called mist. Mist, drizzle. I don't know. I got some light rain drops on the windshield. I had to use my windshield wipers for a second. Yeah, there were a few spots. We did get some brief, uh, we'll call it heavy drizzle, but that has moved along. OK, so we're starting to see the sun try to pop out here around San Antonio. We're also still looking at some gusty winds right now, gusting to about 24 here in San Antonio. You go closer to the coast, seeing some gusts close to 40. So it is a breezy day for sure. And as I uh, said earlier, these winds are not going to let up really for the next couple of days. As we look at the satellite picture, you can see some of the breaks starting to show up here around Bear County. It'll take a little while longer, but you'll see uh, quite a bit more sun later this afternoon. Any sort of rain showers that we were picking up now moving well to the east, still getting a few returns there around Gonzales and north along I-10. Temperature wise, we're at 70 at Randolph 71, New Braunfels 63, Kingdon Lake 61 out in Los Maples. Getting some really warm stuff down there around Catula to 79. Uh, good. Compare that to the 60s that we're seeing up in the hill country still where the clouds are holding on at 66 right now in Kerrville. Here in San Antonio, 
Starting to see a few breaks here and there. Temperature is 67 at the airport. Dew point is at 58. We've got a southerly breeze at 14. Forecast up around 78 this afternoon. We'll call for partly cloudy conditions around 6 p.m. 74. Those winds stay breezy even into the overnight period. And then we'll look for a couple showers showing up late tonight before dry air surges in tomorrow. Another look at that forecast and a look ahead to the end of the week coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A record breaking diamond could be yours if you have some deep pockets. That's because the rare find comes with a hefty price tag to match. What makes it so special though, coming up. Your mailbox could soon be filling up with wedding invitations. Why this year is expected to be a big one for couples looking to tie the knot. Plus, some tips on how to manage all those invites coming up. And scientists build a robotic fish, but it's not a toy. How it could be used to study heart conditions coming up. Yep, that is a fish, but it's not real. It's an artificial fish made from human heart cells. It's kind of cool looking. Yeah. It is able to move because it recreates the muscle contractions of a pumping heart. Harvard University researchers teaming up with Emory University researchers creating this first fully autonomous bio hybrid fish. Scientists believe this technology will help them study heart conditions like arrhythmia and could one day lead them to being able to build an artificial heart. Could someone text my husband about this next story? The largest uh -huh. and most valuable yeah. blue diamond mm. ever to come to auction, and it's a recent discovery. The De Beers Cullinan blue diamond was mine. I don't know. I, I, is that how you pronounce it, Cullinan? I don't know. That's like so far out of my league, but you worry about it. It's mined in 2021 in South Africa. So here's what makes it rare. First, the size, it's over 15 carats. That Second, worked. the cut. See, you'd have to carry that around with two hands, though. Second, the cut, the rock features what's called a step cut. The Gemological Institute of America graded the diamond a fancy, vivid blue. The auction house, Sotheby says that it is the highest possible color grading, and it's awarded to no more than 1% of blue diamonds submitted to the GIA. The blue diamond goes up for auction in April. It's only going to cost you maybe around $48 million. Your husband's got that, doesn't he? Yeah. In his pocket. Brace yourselves for a flurry of wedding invitations. We're about to see more weddings this year than we have in nearly 40 years. It has been two years of cancellations and postponements. It's time to catch up. Now brides and grooms are making up for lost time. If you've gotten some wedding invitations for this year, believe me, you are not alone. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. Brace yourselves for a bridal blitz. A new survey suggests there will be more weddings this year than in any since 1984. Data indicating that we should expect 2.6 million weddings in 2022, following two years of COVID cancellations and pandemic postponements. We have relationships with 6,000 venues all over the country, and they're telling us that really the only days they have open now are Mondays. The typical couple will spend about 27 grand on weddings this year, but expect those receptions to be anything but typical. This whole movement around personalization and individuality and really doing it your own way and being confident in your own way. Yeah, I'm going to have my wedding at a baseball park and you can wear a sports jersey under your suit if you want. The average number of guests at weddings this year, 129, up from just 105 in 2021. So what do you do if you find yourself invited to too many weddings this year? Start to look at answering yes to those invitations based upon who's at that core. So start at the core and then work your way outward. So this is where we have close relatives, uh, very good friends. Then we get to coworkers and then acquaintances. And when it comes to gift giving, try to ship your gift from their registry to the couple's home directly. If you have been invited to a destination wedding, in this particular instance, your presence is the actual present to the bride and groom. According to The Knot, October is anticipated to be the most popular wedding month this year for the sixth year in a row. And October 22nd, 2022 is the most coveted date of the year. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. So a destination wedding means you don't have to take a gift. 
I like that. You know, that's good because you're giving yourself a gift as well. Uh, yeah, right. I think that's what she said. I'm, I'm yeah. all for it. All right, so destination weddings. My friends are getting married. They're that's, cool that's again, huh? Wow. <laughs> Let's make that happen. Okay, uh, 67 degrees so far today. Saw some blue sky out there. 58 was the low this morning. Records are 87 and 12. Of course, that 12 was set last year. We remember how cold it was. Today, we're going to be in the upper 70s. Shows you that we can see a little bit of everything in February. Your forecast is coming up. Landed on his head. Yeah, and then like a little dirt in your mask, but that's okay. Those kids are cute. Very cute. Weather well, not so cute. Well, you know, we're getting, yeah. we need rain. We don't need this little teasy drizzle stuff. I'm with you. I agree. We, we need some substantial rain. It is not in the forecast. We have a chance tonight. There's a couple more chances next week, but nothing that jumps off the page. It feels like it's been forever since we've just got a good downpour. And uh, like I said, it's just uh, it's been, been mostly light. Let's take a look at the time lapse and you can see some of that light rain this morning. We had some bouts of drizzle come through. You can see some rain on the lens there. It just uh, didn't add up to more than a trace at the airport. 67 degrees right now. Cloudy skies still, although we're starting to see a few patches of blue sky mix in there. Southerly winds at 14 miles per hour. Dew point is at 58 and still on the rise. As we look at the satellite picture, starting to see those breaks kick in. You'll see more and more of this uh, over the next couple of hours with a little more sun mixing in here around San Antonio. The sun is out in Pearsall, Pleasanton. You're seeing a little bit more sun. Same story, Bandera, Sabinal out towards Uvalde. Uh, more clouds, though, as you work east and northeast. 64, hello to 68, Burning State, 64, King Lake, 71 right now in New Braunfels. And then in the sun, we're close to 80 places like Katua, 77 right now in Carrizo Springs. And the forecast today calls for those places to get up into the mid, even upper 80s here in San Antonio, probably around 78 or so. And then where the clouds hang on a little bit longer, those numbers will be a little cooler. Gonzales, Howitzville, probably mid 70s later today with mostly cloudy skies there. As we look at the wind gusts, these gusts have been pretty significant, especially overnight, still getting some gusts up around 25 miles per hour or so. I've seen a few gusts around 30, maybe even 40 there, closer to the coast around Victoria. So these gusty winds are here to stay for the next couple of days. The difference is they'll change direction on us. Tomorrow will be more of a westerly wind, and that brings in dry air, and then we'll get a northerly wind after that, and that will shove in some cooler air. But as you look at the dew points across the state now, really starting to jump up here, this moisture is getting transported north, and it's places like uh, Oklahoma and North Texas where once the storm system moves in a little bit later this afternoon, we could start to see some strong storms popping up. That system will be here, I think, by this evening. And there is a risk for some severe weather here. Wichita Falls, Dallas, Texarkana, up to Oklahoma City. Some uh, hail, strong winds, all possible, even a few tornadoes. That all stays well north of us, though. Uh, for us, it'll be warm and humid this afternoon. And then a small chance for rain. Uh, tonight, 2 a.m. to about 6 a.m. That is our window. It's a small window, and I don't anticipate much rain at all. 20% chance at best. Behind that, those westerly winds kick in. That creates a high fire danger. Two points fall off tomorrow. We get some gusts to 25 miles per hour, and we'll have to watch for any sort of wildfires, anything like that. Uh, they will spread very quickly. Then the cold front comes in. We still get breezy winds. It'll be cooler, though, by late Thursday and into Friday. So here's how it looks in the seven-day forecast. 78 degrees tomorrow, breezy. 34 Friday morning up to 60 for a high. 65 Saturday. Saturday looks really nice after a cold morning. And then more clouds on Sunday. We could also see a few showers and storms showing up for President's Day. And it will be warm next week. Highs expected in the low 80s. We'll be right back. Three new movies are hoping to shake things up at the box office and dethrone the number one film. They're all set to open in theaters this Friday. CNN's David Daniel has a preview. She 
won't work with anyone. One minute she's good, the next minute she's sending three guys to the ER. What's up, dog? And you're gonna go on a little road trip. Easy. What are y'all so scared of? Come on out, big time. <laughs> Two former Army Rangers embark on an unforgettable journey in the comedy Dog. Channing Tatum stars as Briggs, who road trips with his new four-legged partner, Lulu. They start off on rough terms, but form an unlikely companionship along the way. Is there a challenger out there with the hunger, the drive, the discipline to become the next champion? What? All right, I think that's enough for today. The animated film Rumble is an underdog tale. Will Arnett voices a loving monster, Steve, who battles the odds to be crowned the next wrestling champion. A young woman, Winnie, voiced by Geraldine Viswanathan, helps coach the monster to victory. This path of Ferdinand Magellan took to sail around the world. You know your history. Biggest treasure that's never been found. Five billion, easy. Tom Holland stars as Nathan Drake in the action-packed video game adaptation Uncharted. Drake teams up with a treasure hunter, Sully, played by Mark Wahlberg, to find coveted hidden gems, a quest that takes them soaring to dangerous new heights. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It is hump day, and time to head over to SA Live. Oh boy, guess what we have today? Food. Yeah. Lots of really good food. Which is what we do. Yes, <laughs> and it is rodeo themed. Yes, and of course we've got a recipe that will surely satisfy those country cravings from beef loving Texans and registered dietitian Shailene yeah. McNeil is here. And of course with, you know, inflation being what it is and things costing more, you've got a great a idea great right there. value cut of beef. This is a bottom round roast. Sometimes we call it a rump roast but for less than $5 a pound. Look at the size of this cut of beef, and we're gonna make a meal that'll feed a family of four with this cut of beef. All right, okay, speaking of rodeo, how you can take just a you know plain old kind of good looking hat like this and really <gasps> spiff it up. We are gonna show you with some of these hat bands and some other really good accessories as well. All right, speaking of rodeo, and we've been showing some video of all the mutton busting going on, which looks so much like so much fun. What animal would you ride? Would you be brave enough to ride, you think? <laughs> Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. She has ridden a bull before, but after you do that, guess what? You get a prize, and that's a cookie. And Sabrina Monroe from, I'll let you say it. Kung Fu Kitty Cat Cookie Club. Woo! Look at yeah. these cookies. <laughs> so if you say. Could smell them, the flavors, and just yes. like Grammy used to make, right? But less of the guilt, like a little bit less. They're still cookies, but they're the cookies of the future, for sure. All right, <laughs> and of course, spring is just around the corner and of course kids are going to be around water more so we take you to a swim school that's open year-round teaching those life-saving skills to kids something very important to do that and a whole lot more we've got dinner we've got dessert we're all set SA Live's coming up <laughs> 